everyone, Wonia here with Buckskin Revolution. And you know, so much of the work that I do is about being in deeper connection with the landscape around us and knowing how to make the very best use of the resources that we have access to from wild places. One of those resources is of course from animals, whether they be taken by hunters, whether they be something that we came upon in the woods that was left over from coyotes, whether they be something that was hit by a car and sitting on a roadside that is legal for us to harvest. Some states you can harvest roadkill legally, some you can't, be sure to research your area. But that said, in my book, part of honoring the life of the animal is making the best use of the resources that it has to offer. And also, of course, this is a lot better for us because then we get a lot more wonderful resources that are available to us from our own hands and our own skill rather than from a store. So one of the parts of deer that often go to waste with most hunters are the lower leg of the animal. Wonderful resource, all kinds of usable parts and pieces. So we're going to start by separating out the little knuckle bone that makes a good handhold for friction fire and then skinning out the hock and then peeling back the skin to reveal the tendons and then we're going to save those for using for sinew. The sinew from legs are a little bit shorter so they're often better for things like making cordage, sinew back in a bow, doing, doing lashing of arrowheads and that kind of thing to your arrows as opposed to making cordage or bowstring or sewing thread. I think I said cordage is a good use of it, but something that's spliced in rather than single ply like sewing thread. That's what you want to do with the shorter pieces of the leg sinew. So I want to start with taking off one of the lovely bones that's super useful for us when we are making friction fire using the bow drill technique. There is a particular bone that I believe would be the equivalent of, let's see, that, 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 yeah, it would be like a wrist bone for us, I believe, or no, an ankle bone because it's the back, the leg of the deer. So this little bone here, just inside where the long tendon from the, from what would essentially be the lower leg of the deer comes in, is a little bone that has a nice little divot in it and has a little, a little slot on the top for your fingers to fit in. It makes a great handhold for applying downward pressure when you're making a bow drill fire. So I am going to start by taking out this bone. I'm gonna be feeling for where the natural junction in the joint is, where I can feel that there is cartilage rather than bone and connective tissue, and then I'm going to slide my knife in there. Now, of course, if I stick my knife right into bone, I'm likely to dull my blade at, at the best and potentially break it. So knowing where bone and where space between bone is is pretty key here. So you see I've gone in there and separated that out and now I can just shimmy my knife around. And this again, I say it all the time, but a wonderful example of why a small knife is often so much more usable than a great big knife because you couldn't get a big knife in there. And also why I like a narrow tip on my knives, particularly for my butchering. I can slide that knife tip in between joints and then I can take apart a whole animal at the joint without needing a bone saw or hatchet, without getting bone fragments in my meat, potentially damaging meat and bone. Totally awesome. You do want to be careful when you're using the tip of your knife in a joint that you're not putting sideways torque because that, even with strong steel, that can end up breaking the tip of your knife off. So being conscientious, always key. And then just wiggling that tip in there until I can cut the tendons and the connective tissue holding it all in place. And wiggling the joint often helps me discover where those places are. Good knife safety, of course, always being aware of where my fingers are in relation to the tip of my knife. There we go. And then as soon as I get more wiggle room, then I can start to actually physically work it out, not just using my knife in there. There we go. All right. Beautiful little handhold for friction fire. So wonderful thing to know about 
two of them in every deer, harvest them, share them with your friends, pass it around so everyone has good handholds for friction fire. I will say these are pretty small and they're hard for bigger hands to use. Elk have a much bigger version of this, which is really nice for larger hands. Even for my smaller hands, that's easier. But in a pinch, boy, way better to have a deer bone than nothing or than a rock or a piece of hardwood or some of the other typical handholds for friction fire bow drill technique. All right, so then we've got the skin, of course, and the foreleg skin tends to be quite tight and uh, doesn't give very much and it's really hard to tan it because the fibers are so packed in together and they're so used to not moving because the foreleg of a deer, the skin isn't, isn't moving this way and that. It's mostly just wrapped solidly around the deer. So it's not gonna become a flexible leather. It's much better as rawhide. And a really nice thing to do with it is take the whole skin off. We call them hawk skins because the lower leg is called the hawk of the deer. You can slice rather than down the back of the leg, which is how you would do a lot of other skinning, down the front and down towards the hooves. And then I can peel off this whole skin with the lovely dew claws intact, which makes a beautiful piece of rawhide. You can put a lot of these together and make a hawk bag, which will have the fur and the lovely little dew claws on it. Super beautiful kind of classic style of rawhide bag. So I take the cut all the way down to where the hooves separate out and then cut along there to the base. Again, right to where those two separate toes separate. So I'm getting the full length of skin right up to where the toes go. And then it's good to get it started with your knife often, but once you've got it started, pretty easy just to peel that skin off. And then you'll have to do a little bit more knife work as you get towards the dew claws. And now you can also see this lovely piece of sinew. So wonderful sewing thread. Now we've got the skinning. So I'm gonna peel that all the way back to the base of those dew claws. And then I'm just gonna cut right at the base of them, leaving the, what are essentially like the finger bones on us in those dew claws, but separating right, right at the joint. And I'm gonna go actually behind the little bone. There we go. Go. So there's that beautiful hawk skin. And now I've got this lovely bone that I can use to make tools or I can cook down into bone broth. Um, this would make a decent hide scraper. I would abrade it so that I get a sharp edge on one side. So basically like cut through one side so that I get an edge of bone and then sharpening that with a rock. That would make a serviceable stone age hide scraper. Way harder to scrape a hide with bone than with metal tools. I've done it. It's possible. It's, uh, it's a lot more challenging, but still this would be a good bone for that. And then also I have this wonderful sinew here. So there's one thinner piece of sinew along the front in a little kind of cavity in the bone. And then this piece back here is a nice, big, thick, long piece of sinew. Super, super useful. cut it right where it connects in with the bone. There we go. And I can just peel that off. And then this one has a thick sheath that the sinew runs through, that the tendon runs through. So I want to separate that out so that it can dry well and uh, dry each of those bundles of tendon fibers separate from, from their sheath and from one another.
So there we go. This is the outer sheath and this is the tendon, two tendons, and I'm going to peel them apart to dry them separately. So you can see how different the leg sinews are from the back strap sinew. Leg, back strap. Leg, back strap. And then some folks use the hooves of the deer for rattles. Um, also, if you have a dog and you're wanting to get it to learn to track deer, using the hooves to make a trail, a scent trail for your dog to follow is a great way. It can be used decoratively. Um, and then cooking down all of these small bones in the feet with all of that connective tissue and cartilage makes for a wonderful bone stock. So, so many ways to use this underutilized resource. Thanks everyone. Please subscribe to my channel and tap the little bell there if you want to get notifications when new videos come out. And please check out my website, buckskinrevolution.com, and sign up for my mailing list to hear more of what I have to offer. And consider joining my Patreon team, which is where the vast majority of my funding to keep putting out these lovely videos for you comes from. So thanks so much everyone and viva la revolution!